Aircraft carriers today are migrating away from the steam catapults made so famous by movies like the Top Gun franchise and Executive Decision. New large aircraft carriers are going to use the electromagnetic aircraft launch system, emails, which uses electricity, a form of magnetism. Not every aircraft carrier uses catapults. Some, like the Indian aircraft carriers Ions Vikrant and Ens Vikramadiya, plus the United Kingdom's HMS Queen Elizabeth and Prince of Wales, use ski jumps to boost naval aircraft to get to launch speed and altitude in a short distance. However, ski jumps come with the cost of reducing the amount of fuel and weapons an aircraft can carry when launching off, versus using the sheer thrust of a catapult to hurl the aircraft to take off speeds in the relatively small spaces of aircraft carriers. Additionally, the U.S. Navy used the first hydraulic catapults up to and through World War II. Even the USS Enterprise of that era would eventually end up with two H-21 catapults capable of launching propeller fighters weighing up to 11,000 pounds to 70 miles per hour in 73 feet, but the USS Enterprise of World War II would rarely use them. This was because propeller aircraft had some thrust go over the wing to increase lift, and the hydraulic catapults used pulleys and a hydraulic ram. However, after World War II, the hydraulic catapults were found to be insufficient for naval aviation jets, especially as jets, unlike propellers, had all their thrust go behind the wings. So the British Royal Navy originated the idea of using an aircraft carrier's own excess steam to propel the catapults. In the steam catapult system, the excess steam builds up inside the piston and then is released from a holdback bar while the aircraft remains attached to the accelerating piston. Within two to four seconds, the aircraft is at the end of the path and takeoff speed. Meanwhile, the piston runs into a water barrier and the system resets for the next launch. But there are drawbacks. Steam catapults generate up to 4G or four times the weight of gravity on the aircraft and aircrew. Additionally, Steam catapults use fresh water to generate that photogenic steam. Finally, it takes hours to get steam catapults ready versus their replacement. Therefore, the U.S. Navy, developing a new carrier class in the Ford class, has decided to install modern electromagnetic catapults that replace steam catapults. Although the development had problems in the 2010s, the electromagnetic catapults worked well in the 2020s and came with significant improvements. These improvements that come with launching a steadier force include less fatigue on naval aviation aircraft, which extends their service life. Again, the electromagnetic catapults require only minutes versus hours of a ship's steam and 37,000 gallons of fresh water daily to launch aircraft from an aircraft carrier. Considering the several thousand humans on an aircraft carrier, 37,000 gallons of fresh water is more than sufficient to provide each human sailor with the daily gallon of fresh water necessary to survive at sea. According to General Atomics, the new electromagnetic catapults are also significantly quieter and require 25% less personnel with a 100% safety record. Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMAS, takes electrical energy from the aircraft carrier's engines and turns it into magnetic energy. This is an easy task, considering that electricity and magnetism are very similar. Once the magnetic energy is created from alternating current electricity, the coils around the catapult of the opposite polarity of the launch bar push the attached aircraft to take off speed. According to Naval Post, EMALS is 300 feet, 91 meters long, and needs 60 megawatts to launch a 100,000 pound, 45,000 kilograms aircraft to 130 knots. After launch, a mere 45 seconds is needed to recharge the system for the next launch. This cycle time is less than steam catapults, increasing the ability of an aircraft carrier to surge aircraft launches. EMALS launches are generally like steam catapult launches. Although less photogenic, EMALS has been found to be more accessible on air crews, airframes, and aircraft carriers. As per a U.S. Naval Air Systems Command December 20, 2010, statement announcing the first ground-based EMALS launch from Nax Patuxent River, the launch was similar. As U.S. Navy test pilot Littor Daniel Radikai from Air Test and Evaluation Squadron 23, who made the first EMALS launch, explained, 
I thought the launch went great. I got excited once I was on the catapult, but I went through the same procedures as on a steam catapult. The catapult stroke felt similar to a steam catapult, and emuls met all of the expectations I had. With that, reports are out at the very least, the People's Republic of China Navy will be putting its version of emuls on its first supercarrier, the Type 003 Fujian. This will be the first PRC Navy carrier to trade its Soviet-designed ski jumps for catapults. According to the November 26, 2023 Naval News, testing has already commenced. The Indian Navy is also developing an indigenous emuls. However, according to the February 22 India's growing military power post, Bharat Electronics Limited is considering partnering with General Atomics to develop emuls to install on India's third aircraft carrier. It helps that the Indian Navy would like to move past ski jumps for its second Vikrant-class aircraft carrier, especially as India is developing its own indigenous naval aircraft. According to the August 20, 2022 Naval News, the French will go to General Atomic's e solution for their next aircraft carrier. This is because the French have used U.S. aircraft carrier technology, like steam catapults, to ensure a reliable strategic capability considering the centuries-long alliance between the French and U.S. navies. The United Kingdom's Royal Navy has also voiced interest in modifying her two Queen Elizabeth-class carriers with ski jumps, as pictured earlier, to have Emuls launch drones. According to the June 1, 2023, Naval News, the desire is to have drones and more capable aircraft like tankers and airborne early warning aircraft operate from the Royal Navy's carriers. Yes, another improvement to aircraft carriers is being developed alongside EMALS. It's called Advanced Arresting Gear, or AAG. AAG is also being installed on the U.S. Navy's Ford-class aircraft carriers. AAG is also intended to provide greater flexibility than its predecessor in trapping a more comprehensive range of aircraft aboard the aircraft carrier. General Atomics is also the prime contractor. AAG reduces human power requirements from 22 to 3 and dramatically reduces the, may reduces the maintenance necessary to trap aircraft aboard. Additionally, transitioning from hydraulics to a rotary hydroelectric plus friction brake system is another electric advancement in naval aviation. Instead of pistons, electromagnetic energy from the innovative use of water turbines is also used to stop an aircraft and apply the force of stopping more gradually to increase aircraft life by reducing structural wear and tear. Otherwise, like on the U.S. Navy Nimitz class of aircraft carriers, for starters, the weight is set and a wire is made taut. When a naval aircraft's tail hook catches one of a few wires, normally four, that wire is being pulled forward while pistons full of hydraulic fluid and pulleys keep the wire taut, clearly requiring more maintenance than an electromagnetic system. One thing that also helps reduce stress on aircraft carrier arresting gear is precision landing mode. PLM originally came from the F-35 program to other aircraft like the Boeing Super Hornet and EA-18G Growler. PLM sets up the aircraft to land, projects the most accurate landing glide path information to the pilot on either the helmet or heads-up display, and controls the throttle. Thus, PLM has resulted in more precise aircraft carrier landings with less stress on airframes and less demand for field aircraft carrier landing practices. The future of naval aviation is clearly bright and resilient with the application of electromagnetic energy. One wonders when, not if, such technologies will be transferred to other aviation uses.